Welcome everyone to um, the 2024 Kansas Rural Preservation Grant Workshop. Um, the Kansas Rural Preservation Program um, provides grants to owners of historic properties in rural Kansas. And the way we are defining that is less than 30,000 in population. Um, the program is funded through a competitive subgrant program from the National Park Service. Kansas was um, among the recipients to receive the funding from the Paul Brune Historic Revitalization Grants Program. And the funding comes from the Historic Preservation Fund, which was established in 1976, is the source of preservation grants, financial assistance to state, tribes, local governments, nonprofits, and other partners. The grant program is administered by the National Park Service, and monies are awarded to SHPOs to finance activities that will contribute to the planning for the preservation of our built environment. So what properties are eligible for this grant? It needs to be the legal property owner. Um, state and federal governments are not eligible. Um, and the property does need to be listed on the National Register of Historic Places, whether that's individually or within a district as a contributor. Um, properties that are listed only on the state register are not eligible for this program. Um, if your project is, or if your property is not listed, you'll need to get a determination of eligibility letter from us um, to attach with your application. And um, that form is on our website. It's called the Initial Determination of Eligibility Form. Um, the property needs to be located in a community of less than 30,000, according to the 2020 U.S. Census. This year's program is focusing on Main Street communities and commercial properties. So part of the application, you're going to be telling the grant committee um, why you think your property falls into that category of commercial Main Street. Um, and if you're within a Kansas designated Main Street community, you get extra points on your application. So what are eligible activities? Um, so rehabilitation, which could be upgrading mechanical systems, remodeling a bathroom, restoration, reconstructing missing features, um, if you're going to be reconstructing a missing feature, you do need to provide documentation, whether that's physical evidence and or historic photos. Preservation, which would be repairing wood windows or replacing a roof. Um, grants are anywhere from $5,000 to $100,000 in your grant request. And this is a reimbursement grant. Um, the grant reimburses 90% of eligible project activity costs up to the grant amount. Um, grant recipients need to provide that 10% um, as match. It can be in-kind services, donated materials, donated services, and indirect costs that are not, um, oh, are not accepted as a matching share. Sorry, it has to be cash match. Um, Grantees do need to maintain cash flow throughout the whole project um, as invoices come due with your consultants and contractors, and then submit for reimbursement um, once you've completed um, a portion of your project that is a complete project. Um, there is a 10% retainage that we withhold from our reimbursement until the end of the project, um, where you uh, have to submit your completion paperwork, um, and we do give you a sign. It's a 24 by 36 um, inch metal sign. So the 10% retainage is to make sure we get all the paperwork back, the sign, and that the work is meeting the Secretary of Interior standards for, um, because this is a preservation program. All projects must be completed and all reimbursements paid out by the an end of the grant period, um, projects need to be completed by summer of 2026. And if your project or if your property is not already listed, 
part of your grant agreement is getting your property listed on the National Register within your grant period. So just some general grant conditions. Um, we do require competitive bidding for any consultants or contractors, um, and it's based on the project cost, which we would go into more if you are awarded a grant. Um, cash match does need to be in hand and documented July 1st um, deadline. And then funded projects will have a preservation easement um, including with, included with the property deed following the completion of the project. So applications are evaluated on the following categories, project need and urgency, community impact and rural justification, need and urgency, budget, schedule and scope, and then overall application. The grant committee needs to feel confident in the project um, and the uh, administration of the project, um, that they have the personnel and financial means to implement the project, and that the project is likely to have a positive long-term impact on preservation, either statewide or at the local level. And the committee will also evaluate the budget to be certain it is both reasonable and sufficient for the work proposed. You're encouraged to be very clear in your answers to ensure that the committee will fully understand the nature of your proposed project. The grant committee may not have seen your property in person, and so the photos and your description are vital in your application. And as you see on the breakdown on the left, designated Kansas Main Street communities do get 10 additional points. So you don't have to be within those. Um, they just give you a, um, a little bit of a boost. So application evaluations, um, the committee is going to take into account the breakdown on the previous slide, but also is the property currently listed on the National Register? Because then you don't have to worry about listing the property. So being listed is going to help. And then is it in a Main Street community? So part of the application instructions I posted in the chat a link to the web page and then the program uh, information. Please read the information carefully before filling out the application. Um, and here's the URL, kshs.org 20430. Applications will be um, submitted online through the portal um, on the website. July 1st by midnight. And we do encourage you to save a draft um, and continue the work later if need be. And you can also add collaborators to help you with the online application. I also highly recommend um, saving your answers in a separate um, document file in case there's any technical issues, it's always good to have a back backup. Okay, so we're gonna kind of go through um, the application step-by-step, step, but are there questions so far? If so, raise your hand and um, we can allow you to talk. Otherwise, you can type them into the chat and um, my colleagues will try and answer them the best they can. Yes, Dennis. Dennis, you're muted. Bethany, in the meantime, there's a, a question from Monty in the chat. Okay, the question is, if we have several things in the proposal and the bids come in over budget, can things be cut or are we expected to complete all the items and make up the funding difference ourselves? No. Um, so if you have 
a roof and some masonry work and the masonry work is the most critical and that comes in over your grant. Um, we can work with you to figure out a scope of work that is within your budget um, and you wouldn't have to do the roof. Um, does that answer your question, Monty? And I think Dennis is unmuted now. Yeah, okay. okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. What I was saying is that my son and I are involved in this project and he had some questions. He couldn't be here today. And I'm reading from what he asked. Okay. When it comes to proof of funds by July the 1st, most of our funds are in liquid form, but they're not in cash form. So what is it that you need? In other words, you know, they're in things like stocks and actual, you know, cash value of insurance. They're in some things like that. They're invested. So do they all have to be put into cash in a CD or, or just showing that we have that ability and have that cash or that liquidity on hand? Is that sufficient? Um, you can submit bank documents showing um, your cash or your availability to okay. cash flow the project. Okay, because there's a reluctance to liquidate everything that's invested when you have a project that takes a while because you just don't want to lose, you know, you don't want to lose your investment, although it's there available for you. That's that's what I wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, there's a problem with uh, bids. In other words, this property is in a place for getting bids is sometimes very difficult to, because of uh, finding enough qualified contractors in the area. Sure. So question, do we have to get a minimum number of competitive bids in order to complete the work? You don't have to get a minimum bids returned, but you do have to directly solicit um, a certain amount. And it's based, your bidding process is going to be based on the um, estimated cost of the project. Um, I think it's over 50,000 bids have to be sealed. Um, mm -hmm. And so we do maintain a contractor source list um, and we can help you. We understand in some of these rural communities, it's difficult to find contractors who are familiar with historic buildings. So um, if you're awarded the grant, we can certainly work with you on getting the word out on the project. Oh, okay. Um... One of the questions you ask is, is there a penalty if the full grant is not used? No, you would, the funds would just get returned okay. and redistributed to other okay. grants. Now, uh, my son said there's a difference in documents with work being done. One, he says September 25, and the other one said another document he read was September 26. And I don't it's know where September of 26. That's what it is. Okay. Um, what does it mean when you said a Main Street designation? Is that something in a local community where it says our property is right in the heart of the downtown area uh, on Main Street, actually? Is that what you mean? We need to make sure that that, and what does that allow? What does that provide with that designation of Main Street? Um, so the Kansas Main Street program has designated communities. Um, can one of you post a link to the Department of Commerce website with that um, I believe there's like 17 different communities, um, mm -hmm. but in the application, there's a link to that page too, to see if your community is a designated main street and okay. you can still apply even if your community is not designated. Mm -hmm. um, right. You just get extra points for being in one of those. Now, and I, my understanding, the grant covers up to 90% of the cost of the project. Is that correct? Correct, but it's reimbursement. So yeah. you submit your um, invoices and we will reimburse you up to 90% um, up to your grant award. Is that now you don't do you have can you do that during the project or do you wait until it's completely finished and everything's paid? So it has to be um, line items that can be complete. So okay. it can't like if you have in your budget, windows mm -hmm. we can't reimburse for them taking the windows out to bring to their shop I we, understand. Okay. we can't reimburse until the windows are back in um, okay you can um 
in the budget, you can break it down by facade, like north facade, east facade, south mm -hmm. facade. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. And you can kind of break it down into more manageable um, right. line items. I, I think I understand that where you have certain sections, like you said, a roof, if you break it down, they've installed the roof and it's completely installed and done and I paid for it. So I can submit that while I'm working on the tuck, tuck, tuck pointing or something like that. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. I got you. Um, okay. Those are all the questions you have, and I'm going to listen to the rest of the things you have to say. And if I have any more afterwards, after you hang up, is there anybody I could call? Um, our contact information is going to be at the end of this presentation. And okay. I bet someone can put our um, cultural resources information in the chat. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I think that takes care. Are we going to get copies of what you've got on these screens? Can, will they be sent to us? Um, the recorded presentation will get posted to the grant web page, okay. which is in the chat, the okay. link. Okay. Grant, okay. Recorded web page. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. We have a property in downtown Winfield that was recently awarded a HEAL grant for building on the historic register. How, however, during demo, it was discovered that there are significant additional expenses required for the project. Would this project be eligible to apply for a rural preservation grant to help with the additional costs? The bidding process is already complete and contractors lined up. So that, as long as you were going through the correct bidding process, um, we would probably have to do an addendum to a contract to make sure that all our required contract information is in the contract, um, but potentially. Are points awarded for a project applying for federal or state tax credits? Does this help a grant application? Certainly, I would put it in the description somewhere. Um, like when you're talking about um, funding sources, you can talk about how you plan to utilize the state or federal tax credits to help fund the project fully. Um, so there's not points necessarily, but I would put it in your narrative. Okay. If a community is a Main Street affiliate, um, will that count towards um, Main Street credit? No, um, just designated Main Streets. Okay, I'm going to continue. And if you have questions, feel free to put them back in the chat um, and we'll keep going. So the... First part of the application is just your basic information. We need to know the legal property owner information. And if the applicant is not a private individual, you do need to provide a SAMS um, unique um, identifier, UEI. Um, and you can apply for that through SAMS.gov. Um, and if you don't have the number by the time the application is due, just put pending in that field. Um, previously, this was the DUNS number, so you may have a SAMS ID I, um, assigned to you, but it does need to be an active registration UEI, so make sure to check that if you have one. Um, we will also ask for your grant administrator or main point of contact um, who's going to be the grant administrator, and what are their qualifications? Um, how do you plan to manage the accounting, procurement procedures, and record-keeping requirements? Does the grant administrator have previous experience um, administering a state or a federal grant? Um, use similar projects or past experiences to demonstrate the grant's um, ability to oversee the project. C is going to be historic property information, um, and this also includes the 
population of your community based on the 2020 U.S. Census. And there is a link in the application for um, how to search for your community. Um, D is historic property status. Um, this is whether you're listed in the National Register individually, contributor um, within a district, or if you've been determined eligible by the State Historic Preservation Office, you would attach that letter um, in this section if applicable. And then uh, the last section in this basic information portion is the proposed project description. This is kind of the Sparks Notes version of your project. You want it to be brief, but give the grant committee um, a small overview of what you have proposed, um, just to give them a taste of what the project is. And then you'll get more in depth into it um, as the application moves on. So the next section of the grant application are short answers. Um, F is community impact and justification. It's your job to convince the committee that you are considered a commercial and rural property, um, how the project is gonna benefit your local community, and what are the plans for your project? Um, how do you plan to utilize the grant funds? And then how are you gonna measure success um, after the project is completed? Uh, section G is current condition and preservation work needed. Um, in this, you'll want to describe the condition of the property and how the property came into this condition. So if you recently bought the property, um, you can state that. Um, or if you've owned the building for a long time and there has been deferred maintenance, you'll want to talk about that too. Um, why is funding critical now? Is the is there a leak in the roof and it's um, ruining the interior? Um, we also want you to prioritize the preservation work and describe the most urgent needs. So if you say your project involves a roof, uh, floor refinishing and a storefront, the most critical is putting a roof on the building so that everything below it is protected. So you'll want to highlight that um, in this section. Section eight is sources of funding. Um, again, this project or program reimburses 90% of eligible project costs up to the grant award. Um, you do need to have the money in hand to pay the bills as they come due. And again, at minimum, you need to show that you have at least 10% of the project cost available but it is encouraged to show that you have more than that. Or in the narrative, discuss how you plan to cash flow the project. And you can do that in your breakdown of your budget also. Um, what other funding sources have been you have you been unsuccessful in receiving? Um, this is an area where you could also talk about how you plan to utilize state tax credits, um, a HEAL grant, CDBG funding, um, so in this section, you'll want to talk about all of that. Section I is your project schedule, budget, and scope of work. If you remember at the beginning of the application, you're just giving a brief overview of your project. This is kind of where you get into the meat of your project. If you've had estimates, um, you'll want to include some information from those. Um, we need detailed outline of the work you propose. And again, break those work items into man manageable budget line items. And should the project be funded, we need um, the information to be pretty accurate because we utilize this to uh, write your grant agreement with us. And you can attach um, additional pages um, as necessary. And then we'll need the estimated project completion date in this section. So if the project property is not already listed, you do need to upload the letter of determination from the SHPO. Um, in this section, you'll also need to submit 
or upload evidence of ownership. Um, and this does need to include the legal description, the full legal description, not the abbreviated, because this goes into your grant agreement as well. And if the ownership is multiple owners, um, having a letter from the other owners saying they're okay with the grant can be uploaded in this section as well. Um, types of acceptable do uh, documentation for your match um, could be a bank statement, a loan guarantee letter, evidence of donations, and then confirmation of funding from another source. And then we get into the photographic documentation of the property. So you are gonna wanna have at least one kind of overall um, photo and then kind of go into showing the grant committee why it's so urgent that you get the funding now. Is there a hole in your roof? Do you have buckets collecting water? Is there mortar falling out of your um, masonry walls? All of those photos um, will show the grant committee why you're applying for the grant. And then letters of support. You can provide up to six letters of support. Please have them send you the letter and you will upload it to the application. If we receive them, there's not a guarantee that they'll get attached to your application. So photos do need to be in color and must show architectural features clearly. If they can't see the project well, um, or if it's blurry, that's not gonna give the grant committee um, a lot of confidence in the project. If you have um, a project where you're gonna be requesting reconstruction of a feature, historic photos are acceptable in that um, in that case. And if awarded, we will ask for JPEG formatted photos, but you can submit them in um, any way that is possible. Um, no more than 20 photos should be attached, so be thinking about how to concisely show your project. And you can name the file, um, or you can upload them all as one PDF. Um, but if you name the file, you can better describe where the feature is. Like you can say north roof or west windows. Um, so that's just some information about photos. And then when I talk about that first photo, it's kind of your pretty overall shot. We call it the three corner shot. Um, it's taken from the corner and it allows the property or the property to be seen on all of the facades and a little bit of the um, surrounding environment. So that gives a little context um, of the property. You can also choose to add uh, texts or doc, uh, descriptions to your photos, like um, the example on the left. Um, you can use rulers, pencils, other props to illustrate the damage, like rotten wood or soft plaster. Like I said, photos of buckets catching water. Um, call out the problems in the notes or the file name. And a small diagram of the building showing where the photos were taken is a helpful addition to the photos. You can even get um, creative um, and use lifts or drones um, or other means to show damage. This project was a roof and some work on the upper facade. Um, and so they had a, dro a drone to show this. But don't get too... Um, over happy with those labels. You wanna provide enough information, but not too much so that it's cluttered. Um, grant reviewers are gonna be looking at, you know, 60 to 80 applications, piling multiple images on one page may cause more confusion than clarity. The grant reviewers will use photos to familiarize themselves with the project. And if they can't see what is in need of repair, how are they gonna know that you need the KRP grant funds.
Also be careful to show details with perspective and in relation to objects and features. A close-up photo of a white plaster wall doesn't really convey much. At the end, there's going to be um, the attachments section. Uh, the assurances are posted on the web page um, with the application information and the link to the application. Don't forget to read, sign, and attach the assurances pages to the application. And there are two signature pages, and I've shown them um, on the right. We're here to help you, um, whether you receive a grant or not. Every building has its own story to tell and you are competing with a lot of other equally important projects. So you need to tell your story and convince the reviewers why your project is best. You give your completed application to someone who doesn't know anything about your project. Does it make sense to them? Um, and again, we're happy to provide technical assistance um, as you're preparing your application. Just don't wait till the last day. Um, I'm gonna answer some more questions that we've gotten in the chat since the next time. Bethany, there was specifically a question about easements and I'm not sure if that question got answered for, um, I think it was Monty that had the question about that. Um, so the easement is in, there's information in the program information at the end. Um, if the grant award is up to 50,000, then it's a five year minimum preservation agreement, covenant easements not required for those projects. But any project that's over 50,000 up to 250,000, which your grant award can only be up to 100,000. So that's a 10 year minimum covenant easement that um, gets recorded and put with your property um, for the duration of that easement. I don't know what the question was. Um, I just I just found it. Um, there was they were also asking about um, the 12 days per year requirement. And does it pertain to just a portion of the building or the entire building? I think they're asking about in the assurances page where it well, talks the, about um, access. Yeah, the easement requires access, public access for I think 12 days a year. And my understanding is that only the grant funded portions of the building have to be accessible. So again, when you're looking at your project, what you're gonna focus on, exterior projects make that a lot easier because that's gonna be accessible to the public 365 days a year, potentially. Um, whereas a bathroom or something on the interior of the building is gonna be harder to provide that access for over the course of the easement. Are there any other questions? Um, feel free to raise your hand. If you still have questions. Uh, Nancy, I'm going to un ask you to unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so we own a building that we personally own, but it actually is owned by a corporation we own. Does that meet the qualifications for this grant? Can yes. we? Okay, thank you. And back on the question that Monty had about the easement, the 12 days a year, is is that a requirement that it's open 24 hours a day, 12 days a year, or it's open for a portion of that of 12 days a year? Um, I don't think it has to be open for 24 hours. Um, okay. And again, most of the projects are going to be exterior, so that won't be an issue. Um, or if it's a retail space, that can be, you know, part of your public um, okay. access. Or if it's a city building, um, those types of things. Okay. Are there any other questions? I see another chat coming in. 
So if the project is for upstairs housing, it wouldn't qualify. Um, so it could potentially, um, I need a little bit more detail about what kind of housing, like the build out of the upstairs, I mean, I think the the critical point is that if you are if you have a very large grant and you have to enter into an easement covenant with us. Sorry, I was gonna turn on my my thing here. I'm Katrina Ringler. Um then yeah, the covenant requires a certain number of days of the year that that space or that feature is open to the public. So it could be a Christmas or holiday open house, or it could be a couple days in the summer where something is open to school kids or something like that. Um, but that would be part of the requirements of the grant. So yeah, be careful what the funding is going to be focused to, um, to make sure it's something that can be easily made accessible. So I'm not seeing any more hands or questions in the chat. Oh, um, Dennis. Well, that brought up about the residential. The building we're talking about is a commercial building on the lower level, but it has apartments on the upper level. So is it, would that qualify or not? If the work... What, what would you what would you be asking for the grant to pay for? Well, it would really primarily be fixing the facade, tuck pointing with the bricks, and painting the um, you know help with painting, restoring some of the wood rot around the windows, and maybe even replacement of windows. Right. But so all of that, so all of that would be accessible if I walked by your building on the street, mm -hmm. three hundred and sixty five yes. days of the year, I can see what you did with the federal money. So that's that's the that's the requirement. So you can see what you're doing. For instance, there are windows on the upstairs which are still visible, but anybody walks by. Right. 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 Okay. Well, yeah. most it's mainly for the facade mm -hmm. of the building. Period. And just to spruce it up. <laughs> yeah. Make it look. Try to restore it back to where it was because there's some stones and things that are you know rot, uh, dry rot and those kinds of things that need to be replaced but that's primarily it. nothing on the interior that i'm aware of at this point so was, yeah. I, but at least you've made that clear yeah. to me that it has to be something the public can visual see yeah i mean interior projects qualify and you can certainly apply for them and we could even award a grant for them but you have to just make sure you understand that you have to sign a preservation easement at the end of the project that requires 12 days a year public access to that space. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Um, so the easement um, does go with the deed. It's recorded um, after 10 years, the easement is over um, and we would remove that lien. Are there other questions? Um, on the screen, you have some important dates. Uh, July 1st is the deadline for the grant. And then there will be awarded at a virtual meeting of the Historic Sites Board of Review on August 9th at 1 p.m. And then here's some uh, contact information. Um, Katrina Ringler, who you heard from, is our cultural resources division director, and that's her contact information. And then my name again is Bethany Falvey. I'm the subgrants manager. Um, you can also send an email to our general cultural resource um, email or call, and we are happy to assist you. If there are no other questions, this will get posted to the web page so you can go back and refer to it later. Um, and thanks for joining us. Oh, got one more question. This is Dennis again. I just one more qualification. You'd mentioned after I asked you the first question about the liquidity form we have to show we have the ability of 
you mentioned that 10 percent you have to know you're saying 10 percent has to be shown to be available immediately is that is that what you're saying we just want to see that you have the funds available at least at minimum the 10 percent okay um, okay but you're not going to be paying until the project starts but right. we want to okay. know that the funds are there and available okay Okay, very good. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure if it's ten percent is what you want to know exactly. Ten percent is available with assurance that the rest of it is available. I need to show you that if the rest of it will be available as the project progresses. Correct. Okay, very good. And none of the banking information is seen outside of the committee and us staff members. Um, so it's not like we share it, and it's a secure. Um, online portal that receives the information. Okay, sounds very good. Thanks again. You're welcome. Well, thank you everyone for being here. Um, if, if you have questions along the way, um, do feel free to reach out. We are here to help. Thank you.